At least one person has died after Russia carried out a missile strike on President Zelensky's hometown in central Ukraine. More than 50 people are believed to be injured. Well, our military analyst, Sean Bell, is here with me now. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Sean. And, okay. uh, of course, we know this isn't the first time uh, that Vladimir Zelensky's hometown has been hit by Russian strikes. Uh, what do we know about what happened in these latest ones? Yeah, it wasn't just uh, his hometown. These attacks attacked across the whole of Ukraine. But, as you say, Krivi Rea, some of the video footage here of the wreckage, President Zelensky's hometown, there were ten buildings completely destroyed. Uh, one policeman lost his life. Um, we understood, understand at the moment there's 52 injured. But that, that number has, keeps rising. And you see by the scale of the rubble, it's quite likely that we're going to see this rise Further. It wasn't just in Kriviria, though, also overnight, uh, the southern area of Odessa for the uh, fifth night out of six was being attacked. 16 of the drones uh, were shot down of the 20, but inevitably some get through and they were also scattered across the south as well. Up in Sunny, there were another three people injured in an attack up there. And then in Herson, there were three civilian uh, deaths and four injured. It's been a very a deadly night of attacks across the whole of Ukraine. Um, and a rather interesting development uh, that's triggered some anger in Kyiv today. Remarks from Elon Musk, owner of Tesla, owner of X, formerly Twitter and the like. Uh, what's he said and why are people upset? This is an interesting story because a biography of uh, Elon Musk is being released on Tuesday and there's some of the excerpts have come from it. And one of the things that came out that was that it was suggestions that he had turned off his Starlink system and therefore um, thwarted a Ukrainian drone attack on the Black Sea fleet. Um, now, the date of this is not entirely clear from the clip, but it does sound as if it was from last year. Uh, now, overnight, um, Elon Musk has come up on social media and said that um, actually the system wasn't activated in that region of the world at the time, so he couldn't have turned it off, but what he does remember is not agreeing to turn it on, which is, I know it sounds nuanced, but it is slightly different because uh, his company SpaceX is not a uh, military company and they don't want to be complicit in some sort of uh, acts of war. What's also interesting, though, is the context here because Musk has also been apparently in regular contact with President Putin throughout the war, which uh, obviously raises concerns. Now, it's worth noting Starlink, which uh, we're seeing some of the satellites launched here, is a communications and internet uh, company, operates around the world, it's very satellite intensive. Uh, eventually, there'll be 42. Thousand of these satellites ringed around the world, um, and uh, they provide uh, internet comms. About one and a half million subscribers. Why it's relevant for Ukraine is because they need GPS to guide their drones to their target, and uh, for the Russian mil <coughs> military, it's not difficult to jam those drones. If you use Starlink, it'll be a lot more difficult for those drones to be jammed, and it provides some secure comms as well. Um a really interesting story coming out of Cuba, uh, which on the face of it just sounds interesting, but actually in the wider context of the war could tell you quite a lot about Vladimir Putin's manpower needs when it comes to the army, uh, that potentially he's sourcing mercenaries in Cuba. Tell us more about this. Yeah, it's interesting how this extends around the world, doesn't it? Havana in Cuba, they've uh, dismantled a people trafficking network. Um, and um, part of that, they are trying to... Russians are trying to recruit Cubans to fight for Russia in Ukraine. So it's uh, a, a clearly a mercenary activity. We're seeing some mercenary footage from the Wagner Group. And it's worth, as you say, recalling that the Russians were heavily dependent on mercenaries for the fighting. But, of course, they also presented a massive threat to President Putin when uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin marched on Moscow. But also, the mercenaries are not professionally trained and, therefore, they've led to a mass of war crimes, which is why President Putin's been indicted in, in, the, in the International Criminal Court. Now, Russia's trying to recruit 140,000 soldiers uh, by the end of the year. It's trying to recruit migrants across Central Asia. By all accounts, they're being offered fast-track citizenship and cash for doing that. Um, but in Cuba, they've arrested 17 people as part of this people tra trafficking. The ultimate, if they're found guilty, then they could actually end up facing the death, sent, uh, death penalty. And it's all part of Putin's decree last year that actually they can recruit foreigners to go and fight for their uh, fight for Russia. But it just shows the woeful state of the Russian military that they can't do another mobilisation, but they are recruiting mercenaries from around the world. Yeah, and of course the quality of the soldier that's turning up on the battlefield. Sean, thank you.